This facility behind me is the Oklahoma on-site wastewater training and demonstration facility. Uh, it is composed of above-ground mock-ups of the various septic systems that we have in Oklahoma, and we use that for training uh, and certification programs that we have, extension classes, and we also bring classes from OSU so that we can show students and elementary and high school pupils how these things work. Uh, On-site septic systems are usually uh, beneath the ground, so we're kind of bringing it up so that everybody can, have, can see how they work, and if they know how they work, they will have a better idea of how to use and maintain these things. The average household in Oklahoma produces 280 gallons of wastewater every day. And this is water that is produced in, in, from your bathtub, for example, from your, uh, from your toilets, from your sinks, from your washers. And uh, if you're not connected to a city sewer system, these uh, wastewater has to be tr treated in your backyard. And for that purpose, you need an on-site wastewater treatment system or a septic system. Uh, around 40% uh, of houses in Oklahoma has septic systems. And that 40% value is quite significant because um, the national average is only uh, 20%, which means that we have a lot of septic systems in Oklahoma. Wastewater that's produced in houses, as we know and we understand, it has a lot of possible pollutants in it. There could be you know, nitrogen, and phosphorus, there could be pathogenic bacteria. So these wastewater, this was wastewater is actually, if not treated well, this is a, an environmental hazard and a health hazard as well. Um, however, it, it, it's water, and um, it could, there is a potential that it could be recycled if, if done pretty well. Because every day it's estimated that as a state we produce 180 million gallons of waste water. And for a uh, dry state like Oklahoma, you know, there's potential really of using this water in the future, and of course treating this so that we can recycle it for other uses. For the state of Oklahoma, we have uh, five or systems that we uh, ordinarily permit. Uh, the first one is a conventional system. In a conventional system, you just have a septic tank and then you have a drain field in your backyard. Everything is driven by gravity and um, there's no electricity involved. There's uh, limited maintenance for the conventional system. Uh, conventional system are good systems. They're good for um, uh, places or areas with good soils, deep soils, large backyards, uh, you, can, you can resort to conventional systems. Uh, another type of system is the uh, low pressure dosing system. Uh, these systems are good in areas wherein you don't have that perfect soil. So you only have a shallow soil, maybe a little bit of clay in your soil, and you don't have the right size of the backyard for conventional systems. So what you do is you pressurize the system so that you can improve the distribution of uh, the wastewater in a small area in your backyard. So that's number two. The third is an ETA system, that is an evapotranspiration and absorption system. If you are at the western side of I-35, and uh, as we know in the western side of I-35, we have, uh, there's, there's less rainfall and evapotranspiration rates are higher. So you can take advantage of the ETA, the evapotranspiration and the absorption of the soil. Uh, to treat the wastewater. So in essence, if you don't have good soils to treat the wastewater for you, well, we rely on evapotranspiration, which is to dispose the water back into the environment, into the atmosphere. The fourth, and this, uh, the fourth system, and this is the most common type of septic system in Oklahoma, I would say in recent years, up to 70% of new septic systems are, uh, are installed in, in Oklahoma uses this type, is the aerobic treatment system. The aerobic treatment system um, allows us to aerate the wastewater. And when we aerate the wastewater, we enhance uh, biological activities to pretreat the wastewater before we dispose of that into our backyard. And the final type, of course, is the lagoon system. And again, these are, these are systems that could be good options if you are in the western side of the state, probably if you are in the Panhandle, where there's not a whole lot of rainfall. Um, so we can just dispose of the wastewater from the house. It goes to a septic tank and then it goes to a lagoon, and we just rely on the environment, evaporation back to the environment as a way of disposing the wastewater. These septic systems are, are not install and forget systems. Um, if you, for example, install a septic system, it will cost you around $3,000 for a conventional system, maybe upwards of $7,000 for an aerobic treatment system. So you have to consider this as, you know, something like you are installing a, an expensive appliance in your house and any appliance in a house needs some degree of maintenance. 
right? Um, different systems have different degrees of complexities in terms of how they work, so they require different levels of maintenance. But there are some, you know, just to give you with some tips of generic tips of how, uh, how to make sure that these things would work as they are intended for. Uh, number one is make sure that you know how much wastewater is, is, could be treated by your system uh, and stick to that limit. Say, for example, if your system is designed to treat 280 gallons every day, make sure that you don't exceed that amount of wastewater uh, in, in a day. Uh, the other thing is that uh, please do not put um, household chemicals and pharmaceuticals and, of course, uh, any medication into it because, again, in the septic system, uh, the treatment is done for us by, by bacteria. And if you, for example, apply uh, flush your, your pharmaceuticals and antibiotics, they're going to mess up the biology in the system as well. Uh, another would be um, please do not um, uh, do not do not use your showers, your your bathtub, your um, uh, washer at the same time because if you use them at the same time, it's going to overload your system. And third is just know know as an owner how much water, what types of waste you can and cannot cannot uh, flush into your toilets or put into your sink. Uh, be 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 aware that not everything that is bio that is flushable is actually biodegradable. So. It has to be biodegradable. Those are the key generic um, uh, tips that we can do, we can follow, uh, that we have to be mindful of to make sure that our septic system will, rem will remain uh, useful and functional for a very long time.